What is up, guys? Thaddeus here. Welcome back to another dropshipping 2019 uh, video. So, with this video, um, I really want to talk about how to actually, you know, dropship profitably, especially for all the beginners that are going to be watching watching this video, because a lot of the time, beginners who first start off don't make a profit um, right away, at least, um, or it takes them a while. Or like, I'll get DMs. People are like, it's been three weeks since my store launch. I haven't made a single sale. So it's like. Well, then you didn't launch your store right. But there's a few things we can do to counteract that. So let's just get let's just get to it, shall we? I mean, fuck, I guess so. I got my blue light glasses on, ten dollars on Amazon, by the way. But yeah, guys, I was gonna upload earlier, um, multiple times, but I flew to New York. And then your boy discovered that I suffer from migraines. And so it didn't happen. Now we are back and, and good, uh, much healthier than a few days ago. So what do you need to do in 2019 to kind of generate these sales to start generating like a profit, right? Um, to actually have some money that you can put back in your own pocket and spend it with whatever, um, with whatever kind of way you spend your money. Okay, so now I think the, the thing that, that we need to stress, right, is to do this properly in 2019, okay? You, one of the focuses needs to be like, you can't, you, you need to be able to generate sales without only using paid advertising, okay? Especially for beginners, because beginners, most of the time, if you, you're, most beginners have trouble converting cold traffic right off the bat. And I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this can can relate to that because you know you launch you know your Facebook ads and you launch a Facebook campaign and then you're not getting sales or you get sales but you're you know barely breaking even or you're or you're even in the red because um, your cost per conversion is way you know way too high. So you know there's a problem there and um, obviously you know with with Facebook I'll cover a Facebook ad strategy at the end of this video um, that that works pretty well for for a beginner kind of just getting into it but there, there's a few there's a few things with that but the, the the key point right is you need to be able to generate traffic relatively consistently without using paid advertising okay um, so th there's a lot to do that but like the, the key thing is to, especially with Facebook guys Facebook ads are slowly but surely getting more expensive um, there's more advertisers hopping on the platform you know everyone starting dropshipping is like Facebook ads are the way to go, the go. and like they, people say that because it, it I mean it, it works it's good um, you know once you you know once you find those winning like ad sets once you find a winning campaign you scale that and you're you're cruising for for, for at least the time being um, but you know a lot of people overlook Google a lot of people a lot of people overlook Pinterest which by the way is the third most popular social media but no one really talks about that so um, for you guys now first thing i want to talk about right which i haven't seen anyone else talk about when they're saying you know how to properly drop ship um in 2019 um that you know that that is kind of uh sort of a different kind of take a uh, different strategy is to use instagram automation for your drop shipping stores okay so for my brands um for you know my white label stores my private label product, like any of those brands i don't use instagram automation um just because i don't know there's, there's something about having uh, your own you know unique brand where you kind of don't want to like Taint it, I guess, is, is the best way to explain it. Um, it kind of puts a negative light on it. But with a drop shipping store, Instagram automation works wonders. Okay. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying to use Instagram automation to try to get sales. Okay, which is what people normally do. And again, I know people that can generate you know one or two sales a day just because of Instagram automation, like you know leaving comments on random people's posts that direct traffic back to your store. Blah blah. blah right. Like that. That's an okay route. But there's a better way to go about doing this. Okay. So now. Most people are, eh, not most, but some people are familiar with, you know, having a referral program, an affiliate program, or like an ambassador program, as I usually call it, because it makes people feel empowered. So um, having one of those, okay, having an ambassador program is super, super essential to having some form of traffic come to your site without actually having to spend money on ads, okay? Um, and how do you do that? It's like, you, you know, you get people to sign up to become an ambassador. There's a bunch of Shopify apps that have referral programs, right? They're, they're literally referral apps on Shopify. Um, and you get people to sign up. They get a custom link. They put that link, you know, in their Instagram bio. They put that link wherever it is to drive traffic to your store. And then they get a commission after the sale is made. It's like drop shipping. You know, you only pay for the product after the sale is made. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a perfect little, you know, relationship that once you figure out and get going can work wonders. Okay. But here's the thing. Most people, right, they do manual outreach, especially if you're a beginner drop shipper, like you're one man. And you're going to go around, what, DMing people for maybe 30 minutes a day, maybe an hour a day, um, emailing them, doing whatever, saying, hey, do you want to become an ambassador? Like, that's not, it's not a, a, an efficient use of your time. But imagine if you had 
some sort of virtual assistant constantly DMing anyone that fit a certain criteria saying, hey, I love, like, you know, like we love your content or we love your page. Like we think you'd be a great fit for our ambassador program, like something like that, right? Then you have that person be like, oh, interesting. They'll look at, you know, your Instagram page, look at wherever you told them to go. And then they'll be like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. And they sign up to be an ambassador. And then boom, you already have someone, one person, right? And then again, this stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks that's willing to be like, that's willing to promote your products. Okay. Now, the only way this is going to work, right, which is again, I'll, I'll touch on this later in the video, but it's like branding, right? You, in 2019, you got you got to look different. You can't look like every other dropshipping store. Um, you literally ha like I've been preaching this since video number one on YouTube, like two years ago or whatever. Um, but custom content, guys, that's what you need to be doing. Um, you know, having continuity, having all this stuff, which I'll, again, I'll talk about um, in a bit, but just having that is the only way that all of this works, okay? No one's gonna wanna become an ambassador. No one's gonna wanna sign up to be an affiliate for your product if your company, if your product looks trashy, um, if it doesn't look good enough for them to feel comfortable promoting to their own brand, to their own audience, because this is this is a person vouching for your company, okay? If it doesn't look good, they're not gonna sign up. If it doesn't look good, they're not gonna wanna promote your shit, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, wonderful, moving on. Now, uh, Facebook ads, okay? This is a little strategy that I, that I like to use, um, that I've you know told others to use, and it works fairly well. Now the thing is, is you, you need to at least, <laughs> at least spend twenty dollars a day. Um, if you can't afford to spend twenty dollars a day, I don't think you should really be running Facebook ads. Um, you know, obviously, like oh, you can test five dollars a day, you can do that. Yes, but you're not gonna get enough. You're not gonna get a lot of data. You're not gonna get enough data quickly. Um, you know, you may not even get sales every single day just because sometimes your cost per purchase is more than five dollars, um, depending on what you're selling. Um, if you're doing like high ticket or something. Now, someone just tried to call me. So, at least twenty dollars a day, which you could be doing like ten dollar ad sets, which you know for most drop shippers that should give plenty uh, of leeway to at least make you know one or two purchases, um, probably more. Now. When you're doing this, right, what I like to do is, I think the two key metrics on Facebook ads are interests, right, and ad creative, like the actual, what, what are people seeing, like what, what, what's on their fucking screen, okay? And the, the, like those are the two primary things that I like to focus on when I'm running Facebook ads or Google ads, especially Pinterest ads, a lot of it's ad creative. Now, um, when you're doing this, I like to do broad interests, like every single ad set, right? So for example, preferably $60 or $100 a day, uh, $10 ad set for each one, right? Again, depending on your budget, you can do more. Um, I wouldn't really go below $10 a day, but if you do have more money, like you can be doing $30, $50 a day per ad set. Now, when you're testing these ads, right? Again, each ad set would either have a different interest or a different ad creative. Now, if you really have the money and you want to basically limit your um, sort of like variables, then obviously you keep one ad creative the same, then you, you know just test the interest. Once you find a few interests that are working really well, you know, you horizontally scale. And then you test the ad creatives to see which of the ad creatives work best, right? Um, but that, that's kind of like the, the way I like to do it is, you know, you start fairly cheap, right? And you have a bunch of different interests. Now, each asset is going to be one fairly broad interest, but still relative to your niche, your market, um, your audience, right? I don't, you know, want to stack interest quite yet, especially, in, especially if you're just brand new testing cold traffic, okay? So basically what we're doing, right, is we want to put ourselves across the board, right? With basically as many interests as your budget can afford. So we can get a bunch of data on, you know, different sort of variables as quickly as possible. Okay. So again, this is now like if we're doing hundred dollars a day, we have 10 different ad sets at $10 a day with 10 different interests. Okay. Those are testing. We let them run. We see which ones work. We see which ones are, you know, not you know working or which ones are underperforming. Right. We can cut those. Okay. Duplicate the ones that are, okay. Scale those ones. But I don't want to scale yet, okay? So like that's the method when when you do want to scale. Some people want to scale right away, which is cool. Some you know, some people want to keep testing. Like I prefer, like I, I really like gathering data. Um, so I prefer to honestly, like if I have ten, right, I'll let those run and then I'll make ten more, okay? Like I want to hor like I want to be across the board horizontally first before I start scaling vertically, okay? So when when I say scaling vertically, I'm talking about increasing the actual budgets. Right, like where you duplicate an ad set that's actually you know, performing well, and then you increase the budget from you know if you're only doing ten dollars a day, you can increase it to fifty dollars a day. Okay, see how it does. If it keeps doing well, duplicate and then add you know make that one hundred dollars a day. Right, see see how they do. Okay, there's no point in you know cutting ad sets that are doing you know well if it's a ten dollar one, just keep it running. 
it, it's not going to hurt you. But that's kind of my sort of Facebook strategy, you guys, for, you know, keeping things relatively risk aversive. So you're, you're not taking on a lot of risk by doing this because you're keeping things cheap and you're being, you know, you're, you're not spreading yourself too thin. Like some people will only launch like three ad sets, all right? Then they'll find one that works, cut everything, and then scale that one vertically, but then they don't have anything else running. Like you should always be creating ad sets, right? Like an ad set a day keeps the nine, <laughs> keeps the nine to five away, okay? So always be testing, you know, new things, but like the key things that I test are obviously, you know, for like geographic and stuff, like exclude, like if you're doing worldwide, exclude the bad countries, right? I, I always exclude like what, uh, Dubai, the Philippines, um, India, um, you know, just countries with where like the mailing system, the, the address system is kind of not, uh, just not clean. Like it, it's like too complex where products are not getting delivered all the time, like shit like that, where, you know, your, your increase for chargebacks or even, even fraudulent orders are higher. Okay. So obviously there's that, but like the key things that I'm testing are interest and ad creative. So if with ad creative guys, that's like, for me, I, you know, I, I grew up just playing around with Photoshop, playing around with photography and content. Um, and you know, content's like, like one of my big things I'm known for. Um, so that's what I like to do is test the actual ad creative because that's what people are seeing. So, you know, you can have the best interests out there. Um, you know, you could be on point with your, with your, with your target audience and like, you'll be getting, you know, results, but if your ad creative, you know, like your ad creative can always improve. There, there can always be ways to make your ad creative more attractive to, to your audience that, that you're basically wanting them to buy your product. Okay. Um, now that's sort of like that Facebook ad strategy, um, that, that basically I, I prefer to run, um, these days for my drop shipping stores. It's, it's quite actually a bit different for brand, uh, brands and like private label and, you know, completely branded stores. Um, but that, you know, that's like, we, we go get press and we go, uh, <laughs> it is a lot, just not just straight paid ads, um, from cold traffic right away. That's not how we launch a brand. Now, um, the only way to get these Facebook ads and the Instagram automation and like the, the ambassador program and all this stuff to work well and to actually be profitable in 2019 guys, it all comes down to like branding. Okay. Branding, like your angle, how, how customers perceive you and your offer, um, and everything like that. Right. And again, I need to stress like content. Okay. So like drop shipping products, you find them, you can probably find the same thing on Amazon, order that shit on prime, get it to your house, like two days, three days, whatever it is. Right. You can go get photos, you get content or you send that to a photographer in your city to whoever, you know, right content, content, content is essential. Okay. Um, like that, that, that's probably the most important factor. Okay. Cause again, you need to feel different. You need to feel genuine. You need to feel like you're not another dropshipping store. Cause like at this point in 2019 dropshipping has been around, not, not a long time. Like it's still like, I mean, on, on, like e-commerce itself, uh, the market cap is supposed to like double this year. Um, so we're cruising on that end. Okay. We're cruising on that end, but you need, you need to be different because there are people like a lot of the people that buy things online are familiar with like, like even subconscious, like they're familiar with just the flow of things and like how things look and operate. And so if they notice, you know, certain things are similar to sites that, that have been dropshipping sites before where, you know, they get products, you know, delayed, they don't even get the product. Like they've had a bad experience with, they'll relate that to your store without you even having done anything wrong. Okay. That's why you need to look different. You need to be different and brand yourself differently. Okay. Again, that's where content is in play because content's unique and you can make things unique, um, through that. Okay. Um, continuity as well, guys, is super, super important, especially with colors. Okay. Some people's colors are all over the fucking place and that's not what you want to be doing. So even in design school, guys, did you like stick to three colors? Okay. Three colors, two of them can be slightly similar and you need one that kind of offsets the other two. Okay. That's kind of my go-to for brands. That's kind of my go-to for most things. Um, you stick to three colors. Okay. And then with those, like that, that's, that's your website. You stick to those. You don't use a bunch of different colors. You don't, you're not using seven, eight, nine colors all over the board. And it's going to make your site look sloppy and gross and just all over the place. Okay. Um, you know, just small things like even removing the powered by Shopify thing, uh, on your footer of your website, there's, you know, adding like a trademark, um, which I mean is technically if you're not trademarked, you know, I didn't tell you to do this. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can like a add that after your logo name. Um, just things that, that give a presence that, you know, you're, you're not like the rest of these drop shipping stores, right? Cause that's not what you want people to, um, kind of like group you in. Okay. Um, the, the other key thing, right. With branding is like, you need to add your brand's language to your site. Okay. What, what do I mean by that is, Oh, Hey, we got Dante over there in the back. I just noticed. Um, <laughs> Uh, where was you need to add your brand's language to your site. What do I mean? That? Like you'll see, you know, with, uh, girls stores or, um, you know, we, we, like influencers with like 150 K that are, that are models and stuff, right? If you go to a website, they're like, 
they're, they're like for example they'll have a, a a banner on their website right it says like hey babes you know uh you know sign up for email list and get 20 percent off like like saying hey babes because like, they know their audience guys and they know their brand like for them for that influencer right it's going off of their sort of personality because it's the influencer's website but that's where you have to decide what your brand is kind of the language behind it so again for one of my very first drop streams was called the nugget the entire theme was that people were in a gold mine okay a gold mine right and that all these products were like little nuggets of, of gold like gold nuggets okay and that was like the theme and then we could cater our language around that and people felt like like it was something unique okay um i think that's why my fourth my store did so well is because i was doing all of this two years ago okay now uh the last thing right is like you you have to understand that you can't really be price competitive especially with amazon and these other um, huge companies around right and that's okay like you don't need to be price competitive like there, there's only a certain people that you know price price compare and shit like that so what you need to do is you need you need to understand that amazon can't run ads on specific products that's not what they do because there's so many products right you need to understand that hey your store you might you're only going to have two or three products that are selling really really well most of the time okay so with that, you need to find a way to market those two or three products really, really well, better than anyone else. So how do you actually do it? Again, it's like it goes to branding, it goes to content, it goes to like all of this stuff in one. It's like these are all different cogs in a goddamn wheel that wheel that you need to make sure are 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 working, okay? And if you have one that's just out of place, nothing else works or barely works. It's barely functioning, okay? So like you gotta think of this as all just one giant sort of machine that needs constant attention. Um, and you know, I, it one one little piece one little off piece can can kind of set off the whole thing okay so that's kind of it guys like just to recap right so this branding um content is a huge huge thing that that's what you're going to use to be unique and differentiate yourself differentiate yourself um instagram automation i don't you know uh, advocate using that for like brands um anything like that but i do advocate using it for drop shipping stores okay and with a drop shipping store don't use it to just try and get cold sales, okay? Although that works, it's not worth the one or two sales a day. It's way better to get one or two brand ambassadors a day who can always continually drive traffic because they're always going to be trying to grow their own audience. Their, you know, your link is always in their bio. Overall, like that always works. But again, coming back to branding, you like you have to have a good brand for that to work, okay? And then with Facebook ads, right? You test the interests, you test the ad creative, and you scale horizontally, right? You're driving traffic to your site, but you need brand continuity right from going from ad creative to your website like the ad could be really really good but if you go to your website and it's shit then it's not going to flow or if the colors are off right that's why you stick to three colors all right so there's, there's all this stuff that kind of goes in play guys that's kind of just wanted to sort of talk to you guys about um in this video today because i haven't uploaded in a bit just because i basically died in new york but um and that's the video guys i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to leave a like make sure to drop a comment and don't forget to subscribe guys we are doing a video basically whenever i feel like it but i'm trying to do every other day we'll see how that goes um <laughs> hope you guys enjoy make sure to follow me on instagram and twitter wherever else the fuck you want um there's links in the description for stuff um and yeah i'll see you guys see you guys in the next video this is fucking half asian tony stark coming at you shoots <laughs> yeah.